Hey, how's it going, fellow mixers and music makers? This is Michael Oskam from ProWestRecording.com. And as promised, today I'm going to be bringing you a video that's going to compare and contrast some different processors, some compressors, some reverb units, some uh, delays, and then some overdrive units, all of which are going to be uh, affecting a vocal track that we're working with. Um, it's it's uh, the routing is pretty simple. I'm going to skip most of it, assuming that you know how to do it, and we're just going to get right into the plugins and kind of see how I might process a vocal uh, for this particular style of music. This is a song that I I had uh, shown in a video once before that I was working on, and I'm just going to use it again with kind of a scratch vocal to give you an idea. Here, let's play it. <laughs> that uh, let's get in here so let's see what's going on here's a real simple uh, explanation of, of what I'm doing I have my lead vocal track here which I always run my uh, vocal tracks through an auxiliary track and then I like to apply my processing as far as uh, compression and EQ to the auxiliary track and then I split sends off of that for my my effects so that's what I have going on here I have this lead vocal and I ran it into Melodyne first. By the way, if you don't have Melodyne, get it. It's probably one of the best plugins you can you can get for your for your recording setup that will help help you as far as just everything. Just get it. It's not just gonna help with pitch correction. It helps with timing. It helps with uh, everything. In fact, I can do a whole video on Melodyne, but I'm not going to. But uh, if you're totally unfamiliar with it. Basically, you have to capture the audio into Melodyne. So that's what's happened already. I've ran this lead box into Melodyne. And so now Melodyne is playing back the audio. But I'm going to leave the, the vocal visible just for the sake of this. Um, so what I have on this Vox sub then are my uh, compressors. I have the Waves version of the LA-2A, which is my go-to for vocals. But I have some others that I use, and I'm going to try for this song too. I have the Renaissance compressor, and I have the Wave C1, which uh, sounds good on vocals too. And we're going to kind of cycle through those and see which one sounds best. Then I have three sends coming off of my main vocal, uh, a delay, a reverb, and a, uh, what I renamed to drive. So delay is being sent to this delay, aux. On it, I have the uh, Pro Tools extra long delay, the H delay from Waves, and the Super Tap also from Waves. So we're going to see which one sounds best for this song. Then I have my reverb sent here, and that's coming to here. And on there I have Pro Tools D-verb. Uh, I have Renaissance verb from Waves. And I have Air Reverb, another Pro Tools reverb plugin. We're going to see which one sounds best. And then this song has got a little bit of uh, rock to it. And so I contemplated uh, adding a layer of kind of distortion or a little bit of overdrive to the vocal underneath the main part. And so that's what I have set up here. I have a, a split called drive, and that's uh, coming into this channel, which I have bypassed the sans amp and the uh, one knob driver. Uh, one knob are a great line of plugins, um, and they are quite literally one knob, all of them. They do what they say, and it's just a matter of how much of it you want to do by how much you turn that one knob. It's a pretty cool premise, especially uh, if you you know if if mixing isn't your your life and you just want some to throw something on there that's simple and that sounds good uh, you might want to check out that little plug-in line anyway so let's get into this here these three sends um, are going to be sent at 100 percent so they're going to be pre-fader and the, uh, the fader at nominal for all three I'll explain why in a second um, which means I'm going to be controlling the return level with the fader on the channel so that's how uh, that's how much uh, wet you'll hear. So let's start with a uh, delay. Let me give you an idea of what this vocal sounds like. It's just kind of a scratch vocal that I've thrown in there. If it would play, that'd be cool. Girls in the past, I told that I love it's you who I find. I'm still dreaming love. So okay. That's what we're going to start with right there. So what I have uh, on here, as I mentioned, is Melodyne playing that back. And then I have an REQ6 as a Renaissance EQ 
and it's just giving it some uh, presence up top. But never mind that. Let's talk about compression. So the Waves LA-2A. If you've never used it before, you are missing out. It is a great, great, great sounding plugin to be used on all sorts of stuff, uh, in particular vocals. Uh, the operation of the plugin uh, is just that of the hardware unit. It's the same two knobs, and it's pretty simple. They have some presets. Um, most of the time, it, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, we can set it to vocal, and it's just going to bring the gain down a little bit. And it has some uh, real character to it. So let's take a listen. Let's turn it on here. And by the way, these are all bypassed, in case you, you weren't aware. That's why they're blue. So all we're hearing now is the straight-up vocal with the LA-2A. Of the girls in the past And it's just touching told it. That I love. And I'm going to bring up the peak reduction. I want to hit it a little harder than that. Of the girls in the past I told that I love It's you who I find I like it a lot already. Um, you're going to want to put some makeup gain in there. Let's bypass it. Of the girls in the past I, Of the girls in the past It just really smooths everything out. Let's bring up the makeup gain a little bit. Now, this is... I'm going to start early with a trick that I do. Um, a lot of times, people are tricked by a compressor because it, it, makes, it, it makes the track louder. And so you put a compressor in the chain, and all of a sudden, they're like, oh, that sounds better because it gets louder. And uh, that's not actually the case. So you need to make sure that you're you're matching the gain level so that all you're hearing is the effect of it, you know, smoothing out the peaks and all that, doing what a compressor does, bringing up the softer parts, etc., uh, and not just adding gain. Now, that being said, <coughs> excuse me, if, if I'm using something like an LA-2A, I'm using it because of the sound that it creates. And especially if you're using, like, outboard stuff, the circuitry inside of it is what's giving it its sound. And so they've emulated that circuitry in all these kinds of plugins, especially the uh, Chris Lord Algae line here. And um, so I cheat a little bit. I and a lot of the guys, the big names, they cheat too. I like to add a little more gain than um, you're supposed to. I like to have that gain bump because I'm adding the characteristic of the plugin. That's what I want. So I'm not afraid to give it a little more gain. As long as you can uh, decipher in your mind if you can determine the difference between the two sounds, not just because one is louder uh, and you're properly compressing it on just smashing the vocal. Uh, I have no problem adding a little bit of gain because I want the character of the plugin. So let's do this again. It's bypass. Let's get just a little piece of this looping. Of the girls in the past. Of the girls in the past. And that's a little too much. But you get the idea. Let's move on. So you can hold command to bypass that. Let's unbypass the R compressor, and let's uh, let's just go with presets here. Vocal. Now they require you to bring the threshold down. Of the down. girls in the past. Of the girls in the past. Of the girls in the past. I'm knocking off quite a bit there. Let's give it some makeup gain. This one's a lot smoother. It doesn't have as much. Uh, of the characteristic here. Of the girls in the past. Of the girl. I'm only hitting it at 2.49 to 1 too. That would contribute. Now this has a ratio setting. The LA-2A doesn't have a ratio. It's real simple. It's just two knobs. There's a lot of kind of dynamic range in this vocal, so I want to hit a little harder. Of the girls in the past. Of the girls in the past. Bypass. Of the girls in the past. I like that one too. All right, let's move on. Let's listen to the uh, Waves C1. All right, this one we'll do a we'll do just a classic compressor setting. Of the girls in the past. Of the I'm going to unloop that because it's going to drive us nuts. Of the girls in the past. I told that I love. That's a pretty high ratio, but that's okay. That's about it back to where the other one was, somewhere in the four range. Of the girls in the past, I told that I loved. It's you who I find. I'm still dreaming love. I don't know. I like that one too. All right, so let's cycle through these. We'll start with the LA2A. Eh? You guys can make up your mind as to which one you like. Of the girls in the past, I told that I loved. Of the girls in the past, I told that I love. 
of the girls in the past I told that I love. I actually like the uh, Renaissance, so let's go with that one. Cool. Moving on. Let's keep building this out. Um, but any one of those would have worked. They all sound really good. So let's turn the delay on, and let's start with the extra long delay. I like this plugin a lot. First of all, let's solo save these. Okay. Hold Command and click solo to do that, by the way. So let's open this up, and let's get... Uh, the, a lot of people uh, newer to mixing open this plugin, and they're very confused by it. It's pretty simple. It's a stereo... It's it's actually just a stereo uh, delay unit, and so you can control the feedback amount and the timing and everything for the left and right. So I like to have it sync to my uh, tempo in the session tempo, and then I can come out here and throw on you know whatever sort of delay I want. Um, you can have them both the same, but if you want kind of a ping pongy idea, then you should you should have them a little different. And we can fluctuate the amount of feedback here. And I usually like to roll off some high end so that it doesn't completely match the tone of the lead vocal, but you don't have to do that. So let's take a listen to this one. Of the girls in the past, I told that I love. And as I'd mentioned to you guys once before, I'm going to be controlling the wet with this fader here. So let's start it lower than that because that's ridiculous. Of the girls in the past, I told that I love. It's you who I find. I'm still. I like their bass. I mean, if you really just want like a basic sounding delay, that that the Pro Tools extra long delay, or even the medium, depending on the tempo and what you want to do. This is a great. This is a great sounding plugin for real simple stuff. Let's set change those parameters in here a little bit longer delay. Of the girls in the past, I told that I love. It's you. And I like using the extra long delay because even if you want like a slap backy type, uh, slap backy, making up words, echo, you can set it to the shorter duration here. Of the girls in the past, I told that I love. It's you who I find. I'm still dreaming love. I'm gonna leave it like that. I, uh, let's let's move on. The H delay, another great plugin by Waves. Waves just makes amazing plugins. This one is uh, orange for some reason, but whatever. And so let's take a listen. I like to start this this with a preset of some sort. So let's since we're doing ping pong with the other one, let's let's do some ping pong. All right. Of the girls in the past, I took. Uh, and this is cool. Uh, it gives you uh, the option to change between milliseconds, and then you can uh, sync it to the beats per minute. Um, Oh, and then you can have it be host, which is the tempo of your uh, of your session here. So let's have it there, and let's set it to quarter notes. Of the girls in the past, I told that I love. It's you who I find. Ooh, I like this one. The tail is way too long, so we might want to control some of that feedback. Of the girls in the past, I told that I love. And then it has a lo-fi option. So we can get a little grit on it. Of the girls in the past, I told that I love. Cool, I like that one too. This is also a Waves plugin, the Super Tap. Also a great plugin. This this is like um, pretty advanced. You can do a lot of really uh, advanced stuff with this plugin. So if we're, you're looking for a more advanced plugin, I would go this way. Uh, you can use it for simple things like what we're talking about, ping pong. Um, and it sounds great. I I think I tried this one earlier. Just out the box, it, that preset sounds cool. Let me hear it. Of the girls in the past, I told that I love. It's you who I find. I like that a lot. I think that's a great preset. Obviously, I can go in here and tweak it some more if I wanted to. I'm gonna go ahead and stick with that one. So so far, we have the R compressor winning, uh, this battle anyway, and the super tap. Let's move on to reverbs. So we're going to come up here and we're going to turn on my reverb. And by the way, these are pre-fader. I'm still going to explain why. I'm going to show you something cool at the end here. So let's unmute this. And we want to mute the delay because I don't want you to get confused. That uh, I want you to know that you're hearing reverb and not delay because it can be confusing at times. So let's go Dverb. Dverb is the Pro Tools stock uh, reverb plugin. Uh, and a lot of people use it uh, on some of the biggest mixes you hear every day. They have used the Dverb and for good reason. It's a good plugin. 
let's start with just a room actually let's start with a vocal like plate so we'll go with a medium plate here and let's unbypass and take a listen of the girls in the past I told that I loved is you and you can get bigger true. of the girls in here's your decay time 8.7 seconds is is a little ridiculous now it depends on what the song is of course you really have to pay attention um, to reverb times okay uh, when I was young start now I I didn't pay attention to reverb times and in fact I was probably a little self-conscious about my voice and um, so I would I would drench my vocals in in, in reverb to kind of hide the fact that I was maybe not as strong a singer back then and what happens is, and and then you know, reverb just starts to sound good. So you can throw it on drums and stuff. You know, like, ah, it sounds cool. It sounds like it's in a big room. But the problem is, and maybe you know this already, maybe you don't. But if your reverb times are too long, then if you think about it, let's say it's a snare hit or even a a vocal with a lot of uh, you know cadence to it, these these reverb tails are going to start compounding. So then you have reverb building upon reverb, and all of a sudden you just your mix will be out of control and noisy and you'll you'll have no idea why or maybe you'll have an idea why but you don't want to surrender the the good sound of the reverb which is actually not good sound anymore it just makes it sound like you know crappy so uh be real conscientious of your decay times let's move on i'm telling you right now i'm not going to choose the d verb uh our verb is a pretty extensive reverb plugin too as you can see it has a lot of parameters um i like to start this one with a preset usually um, since we're going with plates i think it has a vocal plate here let's just start with this of the girls in the past uh the one thing i really like about this plugin uh as opposed to um the d verb is uh well i mean it the r verb has a more visual uh eq as you can see here so I, I mean, if it's on its own channel as it is, you could be queuing this auxiliary yourself. But I like to be able to see it within the plugin. So I like the extra parameters in this plugin. Um, I thought that sounded pretty of good. The girls in the past. All right, maybe a little too long, but we can get away with it on a vocal. And the air reverb. Um, you know, I, I got to be honest, I don't really use this plugin that much. Um, so I know it's the only option for some guys, um, or maybe the go-to option. I I can't really judge. Let's just use. Uh, let's see what it's got in terms of just like a medium sound here. Of the girls in the past, I told that I loved. It's you who I find. I'm still dreaming love. I don't know if you're dream. That's pretty good. It sounds a little. Um, yeah, to me, at least, you guys, I think it sounds a little tinny, a little cheap. Um, of the and, of course, you can get rid of that with, with some uh, high cut. Um, so let's... I already said I wasn't picking D-verb, so I guess i got to stick to my word. Let's go with the R-verb. I liked it. All right, last but not least, let's try some drive. Well, actually, let's try those together first real quick. So we have the uh, R-compressor being sent away to uh, Super Tap. And the R verb. Of the girls in the past, I told that I loved. It's you who I find. I'm still dreaming love. I don't know. Of the girls in the past, I told that I loved. It's you. Cool. Good start. All right. Let's get a little grit going now. Uh, this is a cool technique that some people don't do. Some people will drop the drive plug in, the overdrive onto the actual track and then balance the mix within the plugin. I don't understand why you would do that. If you've done that before in the past and it's worked for you, stick with it. Uh, I don't recommend it. You can set up an, um, an auxiliary send like I have here, just like you would for a delay or a reverb or something else. And let's put a drive on it and mix it, you know, mix the, uh, the crunchier vocal right underneath it. So let's take a listen here. Again, pre-fader send. And let's try... I don't know if a preset's gonna work here. I think let's just try out. Okay, crunch one. Of the girls in the past. It's not crunchy enough. Let's give it some crunch and some punch. Of 
the girls in the past I told that I loved It's you who I find I'm still dreaming of Of the girls in the past I told Yeah, that's kind of what I'm talking about. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, that's a model of a very famous uh, unit, by the way, the Sans Amp. And then, like I was saying at the start of this probably way too long video, uh, the one knob. I like this plugin. Let's take a listen. Of the girl. As you can see, it's not doing anything. As I start to turn it up, you'll hear the effect. Of the girls in the past, I told that I loved. It's you who I find. I'm still dreaming love. I don't know if you'll dream. I like that too. It starts to sound kind of like a transistor radio or something a little bit. So it's obviously doing more than just driving it. I think it's doing some some uh, pretty basic equalization too. Uh, it's really pumping the mid range. Uh, let's stick with that. I like that one. One knob, one decision. Pretty simple. Let's turn on my other effects units here. And let's balance the three of them out with each other. Of the girls in the past, I told that I loved. It's you who I find. I'm still dreaming of. I don't know if your dreams are still filled with me. My thoughts of every of the girls in the past. Let's just pretend that I spent 20 minutes trying to figure that out, and that's the final decision. So, pretty cool, right, guys? I mean, I suggest doing this with your mixes. If you have several different plugins, um, give it a shot. See which one sounds best for whatever it is that you're doing. I know there's some other guys out there who argue less options is a better uh, situation for you to be in because it forces you to make a decision, and I think that there absolutely is some merit to, to that statement. But... You know, how else are you going to know what you like unless you get in there and kind of try it out? You know, if you buy a, 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 a bundle of plugins, like the Waves bundle, for example, the only way you're going to know all of these plugins is by using them and getting in there and trying them and trying them realistically, trying them practically on different mixes that you have and in different styles of music. And then you'll be able to determine which one is like... Like I had mentioned, the LA-2A is kind of my go-to. But, hey, maybe you'll have a diff another go-to. Maybe you'll have a compressor that's always in your vocal chain that you like more. Uh, look at this, uh, for example. I landed on the R compressor. I think that that sounded a little bit better. Um, all of them are top-level plugins that can provide you with the highest quality. So let's listen to this in context now. Of the girls in the past Told that I love it's you who I find. I'm still dreaming love. I don't know if your dreams. Cool. All right. So the last bit of business, and the reason that you wanted this to be pre fader, the thing I've been talking about this entire time, it's very simple, and you can probably already do this without me telling you, but it has to do with organization and it has to do with being able to control your effects in a manageable way. So now that these are, remember, I'm controlling the returns of the effects. I'm hitting the units with the consistent level here of, um, the, since it's pre-fader, it's constantly being sent at the same level to the effects units, and the amount is based on this fader. Well, once I get these three faders in, in, in the place, the harmonious place where I want them to be, which we're pretending right now is, is, is the current state, then I don't want to have to be able to, <laughs> excuse me, I do want to be able to control them all with one move. I don't want to have to come in here and turn this one down, then this one down, then this one down. I want them to move relative to each other, right? It makes common sense. So there's two groups that I use solely for fader rides and moves that I create. One is all my vocals, which we can leave this off because remember, Melodyne is feeding this. Select. Command G, and uh, you can go in here and decide exactly what you want it to be. But let's just rename this uh, vocal fader. Okay. Now, anytime that group is on, all I have to do is, uh, let's say the vocal's not sitting in the mix. Uh, let's say you know the vocal's a little too loud. Well, when I bring down the level of the vocal, I want the the effects and everything to come down in relation to it. So now it will. 
Right? Makes sense. And then the other group that I make is this. It's similar, except take out the lead vocal part and just have another group with the effects. And you can call this Vox, you know, Effects Fader. And that way, if you want, you can mute those out. So turn off the vocal fader. You mute out your effects. Girls in the which is more useful than having to come in here and mute each send and or and or bypass it each time, right? So now I can just mute those, fit the vocal in where it, it's supposed to in the mix. The girls in the and then come in and only adjust the effects. The girls in the Anyway, this video is probably way too long, but I just love talking to you guys. Uh, plenty more videos to come. I I, um, I don't know what the next one's going to be, but you'll have to stick around and find out. But I really hope this helps you guys in what you're doing. Can't wait to hear your mixes, and uh, we'll see you soon.